Hello everyone, this is Joe the Orange, and I'm whipping it, I'm whipping it everywhere. I look like a fucking cowboy dominatrix, I've got that many whips. And if you look at Sulla's avatar peak, it looks like he's into that sort of shit. He doesn't mind a bit of whip it once in a while. And today I'm going to be playing the tier 8 Roman Cav like I'm on crack. I'm just going to be fucking whipping the shit out of his ass, even when I don't want it to move forward. Because that's how you play the Sulla Cavalry, you just gotta, you just gotta get it out. You gotta pull that fucking whip out, and you just gotta go, go ham, go ham. <laughs> now I would say this Cavalry is a tie with Scipio when it comes to being the greatest tier 8 Cavalry in the game. It all depends on what you're looking for when you do play your Cav units. Let's start off with what he has worse compared to Scipio, his charge is nowhere near as good. He's very easy to route, especially if you versus a stellar player like me who just spams the fuck out of that whip, no matter what's happening. Even when I don't need to do it, I do it. <laughs> I want these guys to have re reduced morale all the time. That's how I like to play this shit. Even if I have four guys left and whip it will rouse me, I'm doing it. I'm fucking doing it. Because you must, you must whip it, you must whip it all the damn time. So that is some of the weaknesses Solar Cav does have when you compare it to the Scipio Cav. Saying that, you do have a lot of advantages, mainly your speed is much better. Not only is it easier to dodge charges from enemy cavalry, you also have the ability to keep them in combat. It's very hard to run away from Solar because of his speed. So once they've engaged you, they are stuck fighting you most of the time. The other good thing is, once you are in combat, you can run out of it. You're not stuck there, thanks to Oath slowing you down. That does not happen on Sulla. On a side note, you might have noticed, I've missed pretty much every fucking charge in this game. When it comes to playing Sulla, it doesn't really matter. You can kill them in melee combat very quickly. And you are probably the cav that relies on the charge the least of all the cavalry in the game. One of the other advantages you do have over Scipio is that you can help your allied infantry without even engaging in combat. You do have that AoE debuff that can be up all the time. With Scipio, you pretty much have to get in there to get the most out of Warcry. Saying that, I think that I, I personally do prefer Scipio still. But Sulla is pretty much a tie when it comes to being who's the most OP or not. They're both fucking good. At tier 9 and 10, I'm pretty sure Sulla is going to be the better option because his uh, abilities get so much stronger than Scipio's ones do. When it comes to those later tiers, the big weakness of Sulla though, which will make a lot of people not want to play it, is that his charge is, yeah, just not great at all. You are relying on dodging the enemy's uh, charge abilities and then engaging them in combat. One thing I have found though, if you do face Scipio and you don't eat the charge, Sulla seems to win. It might be because of unit upgrades, I'm not 100% sure, but it does feel like Sulla comes off on top, at least when I play it, because I'm fucking awesome. <laughs> Saying that, if Scipio does get the charge, yeah, he's got the lead because he'll kill so much of your cav just from that ability. But yeah, it is, yeah, so it can go back and forth. It is a pretty damn even fight. At the moment, I do prefer Scipio. I find that his Warcry ability comes in handy so damn much. Uh, Sulla, on the other hand, yeah, he's great and all, but uh, yeah, it's a different playstyle. I rouse myself so fucking much. <laughs> Once I get used to that, I'm pretty sure I'll prefer Sulla. I just spam the fuck out whip too much. I'm just there going whip 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 whip. No matter what. Oh my guy's about to rout. I better whip. If I didn't do that so often, uh yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd have a better experience on the Sulla Cav. So it does take some getting used to. You go from one commander that never routes to a commander that can actually route pretty damn easy. At least when he's playing the cav. When you're playing the infantry, you never fucking route. Because you have that uh, 
morale buff ability, at least at the higher tiers. On a side note, I am leveling up the Carfish Cav and the Alexander Cav just to see if they do have any strengths over the Barbarians and the Romans. The Alexander Cav is great, I find, but I have it at tier 7 at the moment, and yeah. So you win the charge, you do massive amounts of damage, but your um, melee potential is so fucking shit because you don't even... Fuck off, though. You don't even have your horse kick ability, so... I am going to wait until tier 8 before I say if they're good or not, because I can see what they're lacking. When you do get the charge, you still get your your ass kicked, just because you cannot finish off the enemy cavalry on Alexander. At tier 7 at least. At tier 8, you do have that horse kick ability, which could tip them over the line and make them a great unit because I've actually faced tier 8s with the Alexander Cav M1 especially against the Romans but that's because they've made the mistake here or there uh, without that horse kick ability it's yeah it's just really hard to finish anything off and it's not very forgiving when you do miss that charge hopefully at tier 8 I can see that being a way more balanced unit because if you win the charge, you're going to decimate the enemy, and then you can finish off the leftovers with the horse kick. With the Carthage Cav, their charge does get better at the later tiers. I only have them at tier 6 at the moment, and at that tier it's like, what's, what's the fucking point? <laughs> Once you have that 3 second charge, it, they could be way better than what I've been playing. So I'm just going to wait around to see if they do improve or not. And I've got to say, the uh, bonus XP we got, the 100,000k and the 500% dailies really helped when it came to leveling all these units up. I've almost got everything to tier 8, apart from Alexander, Cav, uh, Carthage, Cav, Slingers, Catapults and Scorpions. They're still at tier 6 and tier 7. And in those three days, I managed to farm something stupid. It was fucking... Yeah, like... 600k XP, something like that. So there's not much to level. Soon I will be going to the tier 9 and tier 10 bracket. I've just got to level about 5 more units up to tier 8. And then we'll be seeing what's balanced at those higher tiers. It'll probably still be a month before I get some tier 9s going. I do want to level everything up to tier 8. So then I know which units are good up to that tier. Because you'd be surprised how often a unit seems pretty damn weak until you reach a certain tier and they turn into a powerhouse. For example, I'm leveling up my tier 7 Carthage Swords and they seem uh, fucking garbage. But the tier 8 ones I've seen do pretty damn well in the game and I definitely want to try that unit out. And I've just unlocked them, I, ha I still haven't played the game on them. But yeah, you just look at the stats, they seem so much better than the tier 7 ones. And I guess that gives away with the videos I'll be doing next, which is Slingers, Carthage Cav, uh, etc. All the ones I have not so leveled up to tier 8 yet. And that's pretty much the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and thumbs up. And remember to whip it. Just whip it all the fucking time. If you're out, just keep whipping. Just keep whipping. Just do it. Just fucking do it, okay? <laughs> See us next time. And if anyone has any catapult tips, send them this way because, uh, yeah, that's the one unit I am fucking struggling with since the changes. I'm not sure what the fuck you're meant to do. The fact that the auto aim seems to be better than manual aim now is just, uh, it's fucking torture to me. Anyway, guys, I'll see you later.